Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Win at Chess, a series where I take on my Twitch subscribers in 10 minute games, and I go up the rating ladder in every episode, walking you through the opening, middle game, and the end game. Before we get into the games today, I'd like to tell you that this episode is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, or a virtual private network, which allows you to encrypt your connection to the internet so that you can browse it privately and anonymously. We edit this part in, by the way, so I'm wearing something different. Sorry. A VPN is great if you travel for business or pleasure. You'll be able to access certain websites abroad that might be restricted otherwise. You can also log into sensitive portals like bank accounts without any concern. If you're just a regular user at home, you can access certain streaming websites like Hulu or Netflix and get catalogs that are not available in every single country. Also, using a VPN could allow you to avoid ads if you select the right countries. But I probably shouldn't tell you that. We can just edit this part out. And the best part, unlimited devices. Not three, not five, not ten, unlimited. Something that other VPNs cannot promise you. You interested in Surfshark? Take a look at the link in the description below, use the promo code GOTHAM, and you'll get 83% off and three free months. That comes out to $2.49. And if you hate it, you got 30 days to get your money back. Let's get back to the video. Isn't that crazy how I recorded that like just a month or two ago and everything is different? Now we're in a totally different place. Well, it's the beauty of editing. Now, let's jump into the games. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of very strong opponents today. Um, the first of which is going to be 1200 rated Mag Martini. Uh, you all know the drill. E4. Okay, I think I'm going to begin with my uh, Gambit's course for black. Um, Scandinavian with ED5 and Knight F6. Queen D5, Scandinavian defense standard is always completely fine. Uh, Knight C3 is, uh, is a reasonable move. Now, some people here make this trade. Yeah, now, now it's a Scandinavian without the knight here. So it's actually completely fine for black. Generally, I like to play this like this, just getting my queen side developed. Although the pawn in the center can be an immediate target for the move E5, but I'm just going to play Knight C6. I don't want to trade too many pieces yet. Um, and already black is taking over the initiative. Uh, because white kind of played a little bit too solidly. Um, now, I personally enjoy playing this in a little bit of a, just every every move I'm getting something developed. I don't just take to double the pawns, although that's also completely reasonable. Um, and really, you set up everything for a potential lashing out with e5. If, for example, my opponent played, but actually that's a great example, like a very slow move like this, e5 is can be very, very powerful in a lot of these positions. So that's my first consideration. Um, but I know that when e5 happens, I don't want to trade all the pieces. So I have the option to like trade the queen, and I don't think I want to do that. Bishop e2 played. Okay, so if I take on d4, knight can never take because g2 is hanging. So I think I'm going to do that. And if cd4, now my bishop gets a turn to attack the king. All right, there it is. So if I take now, then opponent takes here with check. So I've got to play bishop e2 first. Taking here also doesn't make sense because the bishop takes first. So I play bishop takes here. Uh, knight takes, queen takes, or king takes. My next move is queen takes on g2. Oh, now it's even now it's even worse because the rook is hit and the queen is hit, and we see the devastating effect here of the uh, of the black gambit's course kind of taking taking action. Yeah, that's, that's just a very soft spot there for the. Uh, for, for the opponent. Also, I've just realized that I've been recording for about two minutes now with no clocks. So that's good. Um, well, hope, let, let, me, let me hope some clocks appear. All right, there's white's clock. And uh, black's clock is... is uh, I added an extra L. There we go. Outstanding. Professional YouTuber, by the way. Uh, just in case anyone's curious. I hope that looks okay. I really would hate for it to not look okay. The Gotham audience deserves the best quality content. Um, although, I think they used to be... And in the meantime, my opponent has sacrificed with check. I guess I'll take with the knight. I mean, I don't really like my king in the center. I'll probably just take with the knight. And I'm still desperately trying to crop the clocks so that they look okay. We'll put them like this. Live cropping here on the Gotham Chess YouTube channel. Usually something just reserved for Twitch, but 
I did not realize that I had actually hidden my clocks from view, but that's okay. We can have this moment where I just act like a, a stupid guy. Okay. Um, probably important to just finish my development at this point. I mean, I understand, like, you know, you might be tempted to play moves like this. Actually, this is a very funny move. Uh, the bishop, anytime it wanders over here, can be trapped with a move like b6. If bishop takes, pawn takes, and then rook takes bishop, let's not forget that the rook is actually currently protecting this. Uh, now we can play king to b7 and the bishop is just trapped. This is how Fischer got his bishop trapped versus Spassky. This is the, uh, the very famous bishop takes corner pawn. Um, I guess I can take this because... Right? Or this. I like this because the knight is under fire. And this is, uh, this is pretty clean so far. Um... So queen takes knight, king takes bishop is threatened, and we, we, we will analyze a little bit in the opening. This really was kind of an opening catastrophe uh, from the... But listen, that's, that's the benefit of studying openings, right? You, you, you get certain advantages, and still this is impossible. Uh, now... Okay, I thought I would have some, like, check, check to win this rook, but I think I'm just gonna bring my rook to the center. Really, when you're up a lot of material, you don't care so much about pawns. You, you really want to go for the good stuff. Or down here, if I can team up my rook and my queen, together they will bully the king into a checkmate for sure. Um, and as long as you don't blunder anything absurd, you should be completely winning. Now then. Um... Yeah, this, was, this game was really just lost out of the opening for White, but White is clearly a strong player. 1,300 rapid just goes to show you how strong and of an initiative you can build when every one of your moves, your, your, your foot is on the gas, even at a red light. Uh, that's not actually how you should drive, though. Um, yeah, rookie two is on the way, and there isn't a whole lot that can be done here. But having said that, I will, I will gladly... Continue to fill the dead air with random topics of conversation. Rook takes d6. Um, I have a check, which attacks the rook as well. My opponent will have to come back with the rook to block the king. And at that point, I will add pressure to that rook with my rook. Or they will just give me this, and that is completely fine with me. And if they take my free pawn, they can't take this one. Then I have queen g6, and I pick up the other rook. And if they go there, I will threaten... Oh, they want rook here, I guess. I'm trying to find the fastest checkmate. So queen d1 is a mate on the back rank. Uh, but here my opponent can play rook d2. Of course, if you want to end the game in flashy style, you can always sacrifice the queen for the rook... And that's not even necessarily flashy as much as it is just completely simplifying. Because even though you lose your queen, you still have rook and knight, you can make a new queen. Um, king here, there is probably m m m mate. M m m mate. And uh, if king b4, knight c6, king a3, and rook to a1 is a mate. We do not even need to take the rook on g2. So, that was tough. Um, that was a tough game. Now, so first things first, knight c3 is not white's best move, but it's not a move that, uh, that like gives away a huge advantage or anything. It just, just allows black to equalize. Now, here, there's bishop c4, which actually applies a little bit of pressure. This move releases all pressure in the position. I've had some people play like this against me, queen f3 here. Um, that's a pretty reasonable move, and after something like this, this, I mean, you just, you play chess. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the way my opponent did it, allowing me to kind of get a very, very quick initiative with e5, um, if d takes e5 were to be played, probably I would have gone here to not trade queens and just keep applying some pressure. And then, for example, if queen e2, then after knight e5, black is already winning because of how powerful this pin is now with an extra layer of pressure. It's completely winning for black because you're threatening to just destroy on f3. So, um, yeah. That's, uh, that's a little bit about Scandinavian uh, and uh, E4, D5, kind of the, the uh, delayed Scandinavian. Now, 
For this next game, I'm actually jumping up to play one of the 1700 rated players because this person actually has to go. Uh, I'm gonna play G6 for this game, E4, G6, my little bit of my modern repertoire. I don't wanna repeat all the same openings. I wanna give you all kind of fresh, fresh stuff. D6, my opponent has played Knight F3, already kind of negating some of their options. They, they don't have F4 anymore, which can be very dangerous. And I also don't know which, my, which way my opponent is going to castle, but in uh, the modern system, I stay flexible. I kind of look at which way they're going to go. This is very common to play a6, b5, delaying this development because you don't necessarily know where you're going to put your knight. Will you put it on f6 or e7? Um, okay, a3 is not always necessary, but it's a very common move because people don't want to get hit with b4. It's actually already a slight inaccuracy. Very slight, though. I mean, no nothing, nothing, you know, unbelievable. Knight d7 because the bishop wants to go here, and that's actually one of the reasons that people play this a3 move, but it's actually a waste of time. Uh, it's better for white to just play here, and this move, they can always rotate the knight over there. In fact, white plays a4 in a lot of positions. The move a4 to get you to play b4 to rotate the knight around. Now I'm going to play bishop b7. Okay, this battery is pretty useful to trade off my dark squared bishop if I ever move my knight, which is one of the reasons it's good to delay moving your knight. Um, now my opponent might play the bishop and still maintain flexibility of which way to castle. And at some point, I will just have to play my knight to f6. Oh, okay. Long castle. All right, so now we have a very simple plan. We actually don't do this at all. We play rook c8 and we try to play for c5. That is the entire point here. Um, and actually this pawn on a3 advancing one square is a big benefit to us because it is something called a hook. And in the future, if I ever get a pawn to b4, I'm going to be knocking on that pawn to do something. Whereas if that pawn had never moved forward, right, that wouldn't be the case. Now, because I've also not really committed my king, my opponent cannot launch a counterattack. Because I don't have a king over there. That doesn't really do anything. That doesn't scare me. So in modern positions, if white overcommits the king early, we have this very clear plan of c5 and opening up this file. Now, I'm just telling you how to play the position. I'm not trying to say this is winning for black. If this was winning for black, chess would be way too simple. C5. Uh, D5, C5 doesn't really matter, even if en passant is possible, um, because this could have happened anyway, right? Like, for example, if my opponent plays H3 now, they could have played H3, C5, D5. So just because en passant is playable, that just still opens up the C file for us, and we're justified in putting our rook there. And if they don't take, because they don't want to open up our rook, well, that's fine. We have space. We're taking away bishop d4 and everything in the center now. Rook c6 is actually not a terrible move, but I don't like that the rook will just be targeted, so I'd rather take with the bishop. Um, and by the way, some of you might be wondering, aren't we just like winning a pawn here? No, because number one, we lose our rook, and number two, this bishop is instrumental in our attack. Bishop d3 is not a bad move. Uh, I would have anticipated a bishop trade, and now is our first moment in the game we really need to think about what to do. So naturally, I just want to play queen b6. Oh, uh, sorry, this is not. My brain fused two ideas. Queen b6 hangs a queen in one move. But what I was going to say is knight f6, and then I jumped ahead in my brain. I was going to say knight b6 to try to maybe come here, and if bishop b6, then queen b6. I skipped ahead like 10, 10 sentences or something. Knight c5 is also an idea. And if bishop takes, pawn takes. Uh, queen a5 is an idea. What I don't like about queen a5 is that if this knight ever moves, I probably have to trade queens. And uh, I, if I ever want to attack my opponent, I'm not going to be able to trade queens. I can always back, back my bishop up also, by the way, just and, and, and kind of add something here. Very interesting position. Don't know what to do. If I play knight f6, do I have to worry about bishop h6? That's something I need to worry about. Mm, very tough. Very fluid position. No, I'm thinking, I'm thinking knight c5 is, is my best option. Here's why. If the bishop is traded, my dark squared bishop is supreme on the board, right? If the bishop is not traded, then I can just take white's bishop, uh, giving me the bishop pair. Uh, not to mention the fact that then I can maybe play a5, b4. Um, but let's put it this way. White is fully developed, so white's position is actually pretty reasonable. And bishop h6 will lose a lot of its sting if I can trade some pieces off the board. Whereas if I allow my opponent to infiltrate here with the queen and then I, uh, well, they take. See, that's, 
Now there's also this, which a lot of people forget about. One of the other benefits of keeping my knight on g8 in, in a lot of these positions. That, that, that is a big loss for white. White probably just went from very, very, very slightly better just because of the lead in development um, and just the inherent benefit of, of, of playing white and going first. Um, yeah, white with that one trade of dark squared bishop for my knight just tanked the position. Uh, which, which is crazy. And, and we'll take a look with the computer afterwards, obviously. Not during. Please, no. No computers during. Another benefit is that c4 will kick this bishop out. And you might say, well, Levy, you blocked your queen side. Now you don't have the attack. Yeah, but it's like in fighting, right? If you fake a punch and they, like, you know, and then they fall because they're so scared of how hard you're going to hit them, you succeeded. Right? I mean, that's just the truth. If they, like, fall, that's, then you were successful. Uh, right now, we are actually straight up threatening to win the game. Bishop h6, the knight will come block, and we will just attack the knight. Pinned piece, right? So, if king b1 is played, which doesn't look completely unreasonable to get out of bishop h6 stuff... Uh, okay, so that, that move actually kind of stop it didn't not no not really but also this bishop has no moves and i can just play c4 yeah i can just play c4 and the bishop is trapped and this is crazy this is a strong player this is a very strong player interesting i can trade queens and then take or i can just take if I take, uh, of course, this is protected, but if I take, this queen can move somewhere. If I take, knight takes, pawn takes, knight takes, and I guess I just take this pawn. Let's do that first. Let's simplify the queens off the board. This is a strong player, just unfamiliar with the, the little wrinkles of the, of the modern defense. Uh, and uh, for that reason, we are obtaining a winning advantage. Now, of course, if knight takes, bishop takes, my opponent might throw in this. My opponent did not throw in that. Also, do I have this? Then maybe the knight, then I can attack it again? Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like this too, but this at least guarantees I trade some pieces. And, um... Because I've been delaying my development, simplification is good for me. The more pieces I trade, the less danger I'm in. And then I would be able to play like knight f6 and castle... And we're probably going to have to win an endgame where we have a piece for a pawn or a piece for two pawns, but that's life. I mean, there's, there's nothing you can do about that. That is just how it goes sometimes. The only move here is actually b3. Uh, bishop c4. Now, rook c4, of course, just don't get mated somehow if the rooks were doubled. This is a threat. Knight f6 and castle. So if I can get those two moves, I get my second rook out, whether to c8 or b8 with pressure down these files. Some isolated pawn weaknesses here definitely don't help white. Uh, and uh, just need to make sure I'm not going to like do anything too stupid. can always bring my knight back. I'm just in time. <clears throat> Let's say short castle, and we are ready to go. And the reason I'm looking over here um, is that we just had some crazy breaking news at the World Cup. Uh, Indonesian Grandmaster Susanto Megaranto uh, tested positive for coronavirus in the middle of a game. And so social media is on fire right now saying, how could he test positive in the middle of a game? What, they don't check results before the round. So yeah, crazy stuff is going on right now. And at the time of recording this, July 15th, 2021, extended tax deadline in the United States, by the way. So this defends this, but after the move e5, there is certainly no hope of defending that pawn. In fact, the brutal reality is that this knight has nowhere to move, which means it must return, which means that after I take on c2, it is a check. Wow. 
Now, folks, I promised you some analysis here, okay? Um, so after bishop d3, uh, I had calculated a few things. Number one, I had calculated bishop b7. I had calculated uh, queen a5, knight c5, and just talking about knight f6. So remember how I told you you don't want to make this trade? Well, the computer is such a scumbag, it thinks this is the best move. And after this, knight f6, volunteering your dark squared bishop for being captured, uh, the computer thinks there is no way to guard against a capture on e4 and the opening of the c file. And actually, the computer is completely correct, because if this bishop moves, this is under attack. So if the queen moves, you still take on e4. Um, now, bishop b7 is the computer's second choice, just applying the pressure. And my move, knight c5, uh, it, it, the computer just wants to give away this bishop, basically. It thinks that black has lost a little bit of time, and if black does in fact go for this, this doesn't really damage white's position because white has all of the development and it thinks that the position is more or less balanced. Um, so knight c5 was maybe mildly inaccurate in view of the fact that there was better things like bishop takes c3. Um, but after this, uh, the position is now almost almost lost for white immediately. Basically, there is one move here that doesn't lose the game on the spot, and it doesn't even look like... It, it, how does this make sense? Queen to e3, targeting this. And what happens if I pin? Then knight g5, and if I go here, then bishop... Look at this, bishop b5, because when you move the queen here, you actually opened up... That is insane. Yeah, this is what I mean. Like, computers will find this stuff and then yell at you. Um... And then we'll just say, like, crazy stuff. Like, hey, you should have seen this. No. And by the way, by the way, by the way, we only looked at bishop h6. Queen b6 and black is still definitely... It, it, computer saying minus one. So that one trade really just set white up for failure and immediately blundered on the next move. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's, that's how it goes. So uh, two different games, two different Gotham courses. And now we will play Daniel. Uh, I am going to play d4. And I will play a London or a Trumpowski, depending on what my opponent plays. So we have a London. <clears throat> and I'm, again, I'm, I'm, I'm playing stuff that I recommend to people all the time. Uh, I am playing... I might play c5, dc5. Very tricky system where you take on c5 early. Yeah, this is a super tricky line. Um, against e6, you play b4. And you just defend this pawn. Although my opponent is playing moves very quickly. At least that one. Uh, and th this can be a very menacing system if they don't know what's up. If they, if they play c5 and they don't know what they're doing. Against a5, you need to not reinforce with your a pawn because then you would lose your rook. You need to reinforce with your c pawn uh, because then takes takes. And that's it. You're basically like, dude, do something about it. Now here... The move b6 loses in spectacular fashion to a very, very nasty trick. You can get a winning position in six moves. I'm very sad we will not get it. I will show you after. But basically, you see how my opponent played knight c6? Um, if b6 were to be played, then bishop takes b8 so that you can give a check. But we'll take a look at that after. Now here, I believe the best move is bishop to b5, uh, pinning the knight and disallowing it from applying any pressure here. Now I think... The best move here for my opponent is then to play the move bishop to d7. And um, there, I think what I do is I need to come in support of my pawn here with a move like queen, yeah, queen to b3, I think. But I don't remember. I can also maybe play a4 here, 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 here. b6. That might be something. That might be something, but maybe not. Maybe that is definitely, maybe that is not something. Maybe I'll just play queen b3 and be quiet. Just defend my b4 pawn. And now all I need to do is to play knight f3, knight d2. Actually, knight f3 and castle. Let's just, let's just, okay, I just need to get my king out of the center of the board as I try to hang on here. Of course, this comes with drawbacks, you know, uh, playing like this because I'm delaying my normal development. So, and my opponent has uh, good control of the center. So, pluses and minuses. For example, I've had grandmasters play e5 here and try to take the full center, but 
Black also can't overextend here in, in desperation mode. Um, you know, Black like shouldn't play this like, you know, E5 and D4 and go completely nuts. Okay, so I'm thinking to just play like A3 and make sure I have no real problems anymore. Uh, but I don't think there's anything wrong with putting my knight on f3. I mean, it's like the most universal developing move. I control more of the center. Uh, my opponent is pretty passive. And if we both castle and then we proceed with the battle, I am still up a pawn. That pawn has not been reclaimed. Now, there are some tricks. Maybe I should have played a4, actually, so that everything is kind of defended over here. I was thinking there was a trick. Like, if my opponent moves this knight right now, if they move the knight a move ago and I took here, it would be check, right? But if in this position they move the knight, then I can't take the bishop with a check. So technically they could play take, take, knight a5. And that would be a problem. So here, if I castled and take, take, knight a5, could be a little menacing. Oh no, but then b takes. Then just b takes and I'm protected. Oh, interesting. My queen is, okay. So do I castle or do I play a4? What does my heart of hearts tell me? What does it tell me? It's telling me to play a4 or a3. To completely shut down play on the queen side. I think I'm going to go with that. I think I like completely shutting off my opponent's queenside counterplay. Could be totally mistaken. There could be now a very timely move punishing me for not castling. Um, but I don't see it. And now there are no tactics associated with the knight moving because my a pawn protects my bishop against all tactics. Uh, and uh, the longer the whole queen side stays defended, the better it is for me. Now, there is one undermining move, b6, but it's very bad because I take take and I can move my pawn up. And if I can create a, b, and c with pawns, the game is over for black. Black is completely lost. So that's the very like tricky thing about this position, black trying to undermine me um, and, uh, and me trying to not get undermined. So... <clears throat> yeah, very tough position. This is, this is not what a London player signs up for. Let's put it this way. And by the way, this is just a little bit of a prep advantage, this DC5. Uh, I've had to face this with black, and you know I know some tricky lines for black to play to equalize, but it's, it, it's annoying if you don't know what you're doing. It definitely can be super, super annoying. Anyway, A4. And uh, we await a response from my opponent. I'm gonna take a sip. Hope you're all doing great, by the way. Um, as we sit back and relax. Uh, 27 minutes into the video, I'm gonna let y'all know that um, I've been hitting the gym. I don't know if you probably can't see it that much. My arms did get a little bit bigger, but I've been hitting the gym a lot the past, uh, past month, past three weeks. Uh, not because I want to be a bodybuilder, but because uh, it actually just makes me feel good. Uh, I tweeted about this, and I said that um, on days you feel lethargic, actually, like the gym can help, surprisingly, even though you would think you need energy for the gym, which you do, can sometimes even give you that boost. So the question is, do I trade or do I not trade? Um... I don't see anything wrong in trading, and now I can finish my development and keep it going. The thing is, this is actually very smart the way my opponent has played this. I can't play b5 without losing my c5 pawn, so we kind of have like a permanent tension. Now my opponent can't play b6 because I literally just take it for free. Uh, but yeah, this is like not... there's nothing conclusive yet. There's, it's still all very tense on the queen side. Now, if I can successfully break through, of course, I'm just going to be... Oh, no, no, no. We were having such a good game. No, 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 no. Now I'm up a rook for a bishop. Well, now I'm, now I'm definitely winning. Uh, but still, still, there is chess to be played. Uh, believe it or not, there's... Well, believe it or not, the chess, just chess video. Uh, there's still a lot of chess to be played. There's still many pieces on the board, and it, it's never too late to do something extremely stupid. I'm going to... Oh, I actually can take either pawn because that's pinned. But I'm gonna take this so that my B pawn can go up. You see, I've been trying to play B5 the entire game, right? And I've never had a chance because either my bishop was in the way or I would lose my C5 pawn. Now that I've successfully moved my B pawn here and it's guarded, 
the game is probably over just because now I can bring my rooks to D and C. And you would say, why like this? Why, why not this rook? Well, because this rook will control the D file and this rook will control the C file. And that is the way you have to determine which... Oh, I had a fork. Oh my god, I just played too fast. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, pawn up and just, I mean, C5 just wins on the spot. Oh man, I know the Discord is going to be crazy going, going crazy about that. Uh, folks in Discord like to watch these games live and talk about them. Okay, well, this time I will not. Oh, and the worst part is it's not a fork. The rook is completely trapped. It has no moves. It's actually nuts that the second I said that there's still plenty of chess to be played, my opponent hung all their pieces. This chess is such a brutal game. I was like, there's still plenty of chess. And then, and then it all fell apart. Um, I guess I'll go down the C file. Let me just not hang my rook. Rook C8 always possible if the queen goes away. Right now the threat is rook C7, which attacks both. The threat is rook C7. Yeah, this was, uh, this was, this was very tough. But uh, often, oftentimes, if you don't ever get off the ground... Uh, from the opening standpoint, it, it's, it can really be a downhill slope. Oh no, my rook. But b7, b8 is coming. So my b-pawn actually triumphantly made it through. Which is nice. The little pawn that could. Knight c5 is actually a very good move. I completely forgot about this. Uh, attacking my queen and my rook and stopping... Stopping me from pushing my pawn so easily. I would have had to give a check there. Now I'm threatening rook e8. I'm threatening rook e8 anyway, even if it's not check. And uh, I will make a second queen. And of course, my opponent did not have to resign when they blow. Okay, we're going to play this out. <laughs> I have two queens. <laughs> my opponent did not have to resign when they blundered the rook, but when, when that fork lands, that's probably game over. But even at 1440, I wouldn't... I wouldn't resign so quickly. I mean, at 1440, people still have to prove to you that they know how to checkmate. Well, here, here we have an example of how to checkmate. Uh, I mean, queen takes c8 is a, is a double queen mate. Let's quickly analyze this. Uh, I think everything we did in this game was pretty much part of the game plan. Uh, bishop b5 here is a good move. Is queen b3 the right move? Yeah, it's showing queen b3 is the right move. And yeah, computer can't actually decide between castles and a4. So it thinks that both of them are good. Uh, even on, well, my computer, stop, my cloud computer stops at depth 20, which is nothing. You should go to like 35. But knight a7 was already a slight inaccuracy. My opponent should be trying to come forward more than backward. Because here there's, there's sort of a tension that's inherent. And what they need to do is they need to go find an advantage. And they have their advantage in the center. They can put their bishop on f6 and really pressure my diagonal, even f5 and g5, taking some space with the king side pawns while I try to figure out what's going on over here. Because, again, like I said, it's never too late to blunder something. One wrong mistake. I give back my pawn and the bishop goes to safety. Black is much better because I spent so much time on the queen side, right? Now, of course, there was a one-move blunder, and that happens. And um, yeah, this transformation with b5 is so important. I cannot stress enough, if you can get a protected pawn in your opponent's side of the territory uh, that cannot be attacked with a pawn, it, you're, it's protected and it can't be hit with any pawns, it just kind of stands there, so powerful. Because it's so annoying, right? So this next game is against uh, Foxy38, uh, a player from uh, Israel. And is that an actual fox? All right. Fox is a fox, I guess. C4. So I would go G6, uh, but let's play E6, B6. I haven't played that course in a while. Like my, my E6, B6. Actually, technically, I should have started with B6. Be oh, man, that was actually very dumb. Especially if my opponent... Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm so upset. Oh, I should have played b6, bishop b7. Ah, because <laughs> now if I play bishop b7. Okay, let's think about how we can turn this into something we know. Okay, I'm going to play Malakov system. I'm going to play e6, g6. And this is actually back to some uh, one thing recommended in my g6 course. It goes bishop g7, knight e7, and d5. 
to slightly different um slightly different setup very unique setup and a little bit strange considering every pawn is on a light square but it's it's totally okay id7 i'm gonna go for d5 ah oh, c4 b6 would have been nice i really would have liked to play an e6 b6 it's been a while uh let me play d5 i'm actually not castling because believe it or not if you castle too quickly they can just not castle and play the h pawn at you yeah so the meta is to at least play in the center first uh, if cd5, of course, we take with the pawn. If, uh, if they, they, they should play d4, yeah, this is super common. Uh, taking on c4 is not, like, excellent. It just gives a normal game. Kind of like a Queen's Gambit accepted game or a Catalan game where black needs to really bend over backwards defending this pawn. Now, I might throw in a6, and a6 sets up the capture so that I can quickly play b5 and hang on to it. But you don't, you don't need to do that. And now I really need to figure out what's next. Um, if they take, we have a very specific pawn structure um, where I need to play in a certain way. And otherwise, I can probably just play b6 and bishop b7. So let me do that. Let me play b6 and bishop to b7. Now we see the, how delicate this diagonal really is, right? White is always a little bit better here. Better control in the center, better development. Uh, but we have a very combative system. We haven't traded any pieces. We are looking to slowly get back into the game. The most critical approach for white is something with bishop f4, rook c1, cd5, try to attack on the c-file, or bishop f4, queen d2, you know. Yeah, this is not it. That's just a little bit... This is, I'm, I'm happy to see this. Let's put it this way. And if, if the bishop goes here, it's not insanely dangerous. We're just going to have a very slow game which will be ultimately decided by the slightest imbalances. Ah, bishop a3. Interesting. Okay. It's a very unique move. I guess trying to... What if I just sidestep? So now I can move my knight. Bishop takes e7 is a horrible trade for white. So that's not something I'm concerned about. Well, there, there's rook c1. So I, I, I did mention this, and cd5 could come. Uh, I'm thinking knight c6 or knight d7. I'm also thinking to take on c4. Uh, now, taking on c4 is bad because I give my opponent complete center control, something that I would really like to avoid. And if I can't, and if I do go for that, I will really be suffering. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this knight on d7. Very passive, but I don't want to block my bishop. I'm also probably going to play a6 ultimately, so that this knight cannot get to b5 and then ultimately cannot attack my c7 pawn. So for example, if cd5, ed5, knight b5 is super annoying. Super annoying move. So cd5, I think I'm going to play knight takes, trying to trade this knight. I am lacking a little bit of space, so I would like to offset that by trading a few pieces. Therefore, I, you know, my, my, my space disadvantage is relinquished is uh not felt as much but if i can get one more move i will happily play this move a6 but we've played 10 moves and we haven't traded any pieces so a very complex game i've also had some breakfast over here i've needed to take a bite out of should give me gotta get your nutrients little english muffin egg tomato cheese The video didn't freeze, I'm just chewing. And I muted my microphone so you don't hear me chew. So, you can watch me chew in silence. All right. Now, I wanna take. For two reasons. One, don't need to ever worry about knight to b5. Two, bishop is open. Actually, there's a third reason, which I just realized. Mm, it's a so-so reason. This is kind of in the line of sight here, so I'm really thinking to play the move c5. But I really don't like the fact, 
that, and of course that's the idea. I don't like the fact that rook d3 is playable. I don't like the fact that my opponent can completely turn it around on me. And be like, oh, you want to open the position? You sure about that? But here's my idea. If this were to happen, I'm just going to move my queen off the d file. So for example, rook d3, queen c7. Because rook d3, cd4, just knight takes, and everything comes alive. And I just don't... I just don't know. Eh, I'm looking at it. It doesn't look super scary. Oh, E3 is a very welcome sight. E3 is a very slow and steady move, which makes me think I can now afford to probably just bring my rook to the center and reinforce. And now we begin to see how the tension in the center is really start starting to favor black. Uh, this bishop is still under pin. This knight cannot really move because I will trade off white's like, the whole point of white's setup is that bishop. And if I can get rid of it, like, literally, white develops in the, in, in the English opening with this bishop on g2. So if I can trade that bishop, it's a big win for me, because now I'm left with the good bishop. This is super solid. My queen can go anywhere. c7, e7, f6, just not over here. Okay, the rook has gone. Makes me think I want to take. I think this is now a good moment to throw in the capture, so that... Something on d4 might end up isolated. If knight takes d4, of course I will take the bishop. Then I will figure out my life. And if pawn takes d4, well, I need to worry about it because it didn't happen. I can also throw in this first. I actually have no idea which one is better. I'm going to take the bishop. That was always part of my plan. The only issue is we have completely symmetrical pawn structure. Literally. Look at it. It's completely the same. So it's going to be a little tough to create com like super legitimate winning chances. What I mean by legitimate winning chances uh, is uh, without taking massive risk. It's not going to be so simple. Um, knight c5, bishop takes, right? Pawn takes knight b5, queen b6, knight into d6. I have a rook d8 there. Knight e8, rook d1 takes, queen to c6 is good for me. I like this. And I have a trick. I have a trick. Knight d3 is my trick. So for example, knight b5, knight d3, supported by the queen. And if rook takes c8, I have knight takes e1, check. Another drawback of the king moving up a square. Now, opponent might be, you know, looking for this trade just to trade pieces, but I'm happy because that gives me imbalance. Now I have an imbalance of a pawn structure, and I will have an imbalance of bishop versus knight. So in positions that are relatively symmetrical, you need to try to find that degree of imbalance. Not to mention queen d5 check is always useful. So that is the good stuff in this position that we have. Otherwise, I'm going to take a sip. Right, so. And now we wait for a move. This thing is super wet. This thing on the side of the Starbucks cup. Ew. Ew. And I will soon retire from... Starbucks drinking anyway, as I will get a nice coffee maker. B4 is a... Wow, my opponent just does not want... It's a good move. Oh, it's a, it's a good move. Can't really complain. How about bishop takes d4? Is that crazy? That might be a really stupid move. Wait a minute, don't I have this check? Can I then play queen a2? I just spit because I got excited. <laughs> I'm like an ostrich. Uh, camel? Camels are the ones that spit, right? Queen d5 check. Huh. And then, like, queen a2. That's something? Is that something? I like it. I like queen d5 check. And maybe I don't even take. Maybe I don't even take. Maybe I just play knight to e4. Maybe I just have my queen very active. I like that. I like activating the queen with tempo. 
And I like that maybe I don't need to engage in some random tactics. I can just be solid. This bishop is super passive. And my opponent blunders immediately. That is very nice. Remember I told you about knight d3 a while back? So now if rook takes c8, I have knight takes e1, check. And I can take on c8 a move later. So queen e1 is the only move. We've emerged not just with an extra rook for a knight, which is an exchange. We've also emerged with this knight completely paralyzed to that king that we traded the light squared bishops on, like in, the, in that area. Also, queen takes a2 is a thing. So... Um, hmm. But that actually defends everything. Very frustrating. All right, let's trade queens. Let's trade queens. Queen trade, infiltrate, win a queenside pawn or two, and then promote. That is the way we are going to win this position. All right, let's see it. Hello. I am waiting. Do 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 There we go. I should have pre-moved it. And now rook c2, rook a2, and we can pick up these pawns. Not to mention bishop f8 or bishop c3. These are actually the 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 best kind of. Uh, no one does this to get better. Like seven-year-olds will do this with their chess coaches, but uh, no adults really do this. Just practical training. This is a very good position to practically train. Like, if you're like a, a thousand, I gave you this position with black. You should be able to beat anybody. You should actually be able to beat Magnus Carlsen. That's how, that's how winning it is. Oh, well, if they resign, it makes it a lot easier. But practical, you know, conversion, like a position like this, for example, with black, you've just got to be really, really clinical. Very, you know, simple, straightforward, simplifying it down trading at the right moment, uh, targeting the weaknesses, and uh, you should be in good shape. Yeah, um, I'm kind of bummed I didn't play b6. I would have really, if, if I have another chance, I'll probably play b6 later. But the critical moment of this game probably came uh, here when I told you about, you know, bishop f4 and all these ideas to put the bishop on f4 with the rook on c1. But this is a very tame setup. And... Um, you know, this knight takes d5 is super important because if I had gone here, there, there might be just all sorts of nonsense with knight b5. Of course, I can go here, but everything seems so tangled if I do this. And uh, this was already the critical moment. I believe at this point, black has equalized. The position looks very good. And, um, you know, rook c8, uh, the, the important moment to capture on d4. And knight c5 might not be the way to go, but the computer likes this way. Takes... Uh, if takes this. You see? The computer gets a position of knight versus bishop with an isolated pawn. That is how it finds the imbalance to try to create winning chances. So there's always going to be something. Something with imbalance. And uh, yeah, b4, we found the opportune moment to play queen d5 check. Uh, and of course, knight d3 was blundered. But if king g1 was played, I'm curious. Yeah, the computer, exactly. It likes my idea. It doesn't even want to go get involved in this. It just thinks that white has sabotaged uh, their own activity by blocking in the bishop. And at any moment, you can also take here or jump out this way and go for the king like that. So an important tempo winning check. And for the last two games of this episode, oh, I won't have a chance to play e6, b6 because um, I am going to be playing with the white pieces. Uh, let me just ping somebody. The next person that I'm trying to play is not in live chess. Um, but that's okay, I'll kill some time. Let's see. There we go. Outstanding. And now I will play the move e4. So we played a d4, e4, e6. Oops, those were a bunch of people trying to join the subscriber club, not realizing that they can just press a link. We have a subscriber club on chess.com for people who are Twitch subs. E4, E6, that is a My Little Pony, isn't it? Okay, outstanding. We know who we're dealing with here. Uh, let's play 
B3? Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Actually, I don't know what my opponent's going to play. Maybe they're going to play B6. Okay, French defense. Uh, let's play... Wing Gambit, no? We can play like a... In the Wing Gambit style. Let's play E5. Oh, I guess Wing Gambit would have been Knight F3. Hmm. I messed this up. Okay, well, we just have an advanced French. Fine. C3. Knight C6. Uh, Knight F3. All standard stuff. Queen B6. And I'll play, uh, I'll play Bishop to E2. And now Black has a wide range of options. Black can play Knight H6. Black can play Knight E7 to try to put the Knight on F5. Black can play Bishop D7 and Rook C8. There's several ways to do this. This is a mainline French defense. White has a big space advantage in the center of the board, but black has maneuvering options and oftentimes good pressure on the d4 square with d4 pawn, I should say, with this. Uh, the fact that my opponent is already thinking is kind of a problem because I've played only mainline moves. Um, okay, we take on d4 right away. This is inaccurate. Because I haven't committed my knight yet. You see, in a lot of these positions, I haven't... I, I will move my knight somewhere. But because I haven't committed my knight, I can actually play knight c3. And uh, then I can probably play knight a4. If I'm not mistaken. So I can go here, knight f5, knight a4, or knight b5. And the thing about black's position is black needs to hit this pawn at the right moment. So for example, watch this. Knight to a4, right? Protected. And now I deflect the queen away from pressuring this pawn. Now, if bishop b4 check ooh, gets played here, I can maybe even block with the bishop, maybe. But king f1 is not an egregious move to just sidestep the check with the king. Why? Because black has completely overextended. Like, black has not dealt with the lack of space correctly. Yeah, wow, that is... That is a violent retreating move. Queen to d8. Wow, okay. So this is no longer a threat, which probably means I can castle, right? There's also some lines here you can play like g4 to kick this knight out, but I think I'm just going to castle my king. So we've dealt with the, with the pressure. Um, and now another way to play from here is to play a3, b4 to take as much space as necessary on the queen side uh, before you kind of do anything else. Now black oftentimes might play h5 to prevent g4, but that's really not that concerning for me because that bishop on c8, which is the bad French bishop, is not getting into the game anytime soon. So I can play pretty normally with moves like a3, b4, bishop out, rook c1 uh, to just take maximum space. But my opponent will try to play for this at some point. And then I'm thinking to go g4. I can actually go g4 even now even right now, and um, let's do it. This is a super common idea against the advanced French because the knight on f5 doesn't have a home. If it goes to h6, I can always take it and damage the structure and open up the king. Or I can play h3. Now h3 is a very professional move because essentially I just take squares away from my opponent. So I just go like this, this knight cannot get back into the game, and what many people do here, they get very antsy. They move the f-pawn. They play f6, f5. And I can actually take. Because if pawn takes, they lose the knight completely. And if bishop takes, then my g-pawn now forks. So, serious problem. Um, the f-pawn can't move. So king h8, knight g8 might have to be played. Like that, that, that might be the way my opponent rescues the position. That, <laughs> look at that. Right on cue. Now I'm thinking to take. So now they did this for no reason. But then it's kind of stupid. Like, why would I do that and allow rook g8, right? Maybe I just also put my king on the h file. Anticipating, you know, anticipating a battle over there. Uh, I can also, I have another idea to play like this. Right, that's another idea. Um, hmm. It's a very fluid position, it feels like. A lot of possibilities. I will take. You know what? I will take. And then I will play queen d2, I think, to try to go for this. Now, king g7 here is... I mean, you just played king h8. Now you're wasting more time going to g7. I would anticipate bishop to g5 to try to counteract my attack. At that point, I will take and open up the f-pawn avalanche. 
and I've got a lot of space, and I've got... I don't know. I think I'm pretty happy. Maybe I'm not happy. Maybe I think I'm happy. At the end of the day, you know what this whole opening comes down to, folks? This bishop. That bishop is not scaring anybody. So if we do make it into an endgame at the end of the day, I have the advantage of uh, more development, and I have the advantage of the bishop versus the knight. Now, this knight does still continue to pressure my center. That knight hasn't gone anywhere, and this knight's not really playing. So I'm thinking b4, b5 at some point will be useful to just send this knight somewhere. But of course, bishop g5 here is... It's got to be the necessary move, right? It, it, it... I don't know. It does not seem like... King g7 does not seem like it cuts it. Wow. R what? Okay. Um, blunder? Stroke of genius? Probably blunder. Yeah, because now, now I will load up the cannon onto h7, and this is just very bad for black. I, I don't see... Probably blunder, right? And, and okay, yeah, I, I figured this would happen. Queen h5, I could get trapped, by the way. This is very instructive. Queen to f8 and rook h6 and my queen is trapped. I mean, I understand I can kind of keep it around, but I think I'm just going to safely retreat to f4 to pressure this pawn, defend my center, and just not get trapped. If I need to, I can duck out either way. Uh, and I'm safe. Position is, position is good. We are chilling. Um, all right. I don't know why I just went silent for like 30 seconds. I was reading uh, updates on the World Cup situation. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if a player at the World Cup tests positive for coronavirus, what do they do? I mean, I, th there's many players in that playing hall without masks on, many players who are vaccinated, but I believe also probably many players who are not, who are probably wearing masks. Pfft, what a crazy situation. I guess you have, to, you have to respect the organizers for trying to put the event on and trying to follow health and safety protocols. At least, that's what I would imagine that they are trying to do, but really unfortunate situation. Um, this is the first thing that I'm thinking about. I like it very much. Just the very direct activation of my bishop. Ooh, counter shot. Not, not quite a counter shot, but um, okay, so of course... This is the most natural move by far. Just don't even question. Just take it. And I'm thinking between f3 to play h4. Right now, if I play h4, I lose my queen. The other option is to just play king h2. No, I like, I like f3. f3 seems pretty sensible. And then h4. I just have a very solid position. I mean, again, two pieces are not playing in the game at all. And you say, well, yours aren't either. Yeah, but, 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 but the pieces that are playing for me are, are doing a damn good job. Now this move comes with tempo, by the way. But I think I will, I will just play this. This was my plan, forcing the rook back to this ultra-passive square. Uh, and then, then I got, I got even more bad news. h5, h6, and queen f6 is absolutely devastating. I mean, how do you even defend against this? How do you even defend? Because f5 to counterattack me on passant. There's nothing. I mean, queen f6... If I play h6, can you stop this? You have to play rook g6 and give up your rook. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, well, that definitely is an option. Uh, I'm trying to find the, the best way to do this. I can also stay patient. Uh, rook takes h5 looks... This is very funny. I can set a trap here. I can set a trap. Hmm... If I set my trap, there is also a chance that this move happens. Let's just play h6. Let's just play h6. I was going to say my opponent could play h6. My trap was that rook takes h5, for example. Rook h5 looks like 
you know, you succeed at something, but I have check, we trade queens, then I take your rook for free. But I, I, did, I didn't want to play for a trick. Oh, no. My opponent has allowed... Oh, this is, this is like... This is like being suffocated to death. I don't even need to do anything. I... I can just, like, move on with my life. I can play moves like knight c5. You know, I'm not gonna lie, folks. I'm supposed to show mercy to my subscribers. Um, like, with swift execution, probably just take the rook and get out of there. But I can play any move here. I mean, black is completely paralyzed. This is crazy. What a position. Unbelievable position. Just suffocating. I, I even want to go knight b3 to not allow knight takes d4. What I, the way I want to win this game is like this. To take on g7 and then at that next moment take on h7. So probably bishop e8. Okay, knight d4 has been played. Uh, but I can take the bishop for free now. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my goodness. This is, uh, this is not good. Let's trade rooks. Again, black cannot move. If black plays knight takes f3 and I take with the queen, then black can move. But if I just move my king, black cannot move at all. So the other game plan is to go the other way. To go that way. And at some point deliver checkmate. In a very violent way. So we will end the game. And the, ne the next game of this... Uh, the next game is going to be a, a challenge, for sure. Uh, the next game is... That's checkmate. Wow. Uh, yeah, that... French defense. Advanced variation. Very, very tough line. Um, I've played the French with black, so I, I'm a little bit well-versed in how to deal with this, but this just shows you that strong players do not play well when they don't have a lot of space. Uh, and we didn't do much crazy stuff. I mean, I deflected the queen off the board... And at some point, I took advantage of the awkward positioning of the knight, even at the cost of pushing pawns in front of my own king. Because it's okay to do that if you can restrict. Restrict pieces rather than chasing them. Chasing the piece here would have allowed a permanent knight f5, which is very bad for white. But by playing a simple move like h3, uh, and then taking and then playing like this, I mean, we just got a very pleasant position and didn't really look back. And our final game of this video... It's going to be against a very strong player who is rated 2200. I am going to play e4 again, and hopefully we don't have another French. We have a Sicilian defense. Um, against this, I'm going to play the deferred wing gambit with knight f3 and b4. Um, this is a, a very fun system, which can lead to some super interesting positions. So if knight takes b4, we play c3 and then d4. And that, trans that actually can transpose to a French defense, which I was trying to play last game. Uh, but if pawn takes, then we will play d4. d5 is the best move here for black. Uh, and play can get really wild, actually. Like, play can get super strange, right? So now we, uh, we take, and the queen is in the center. And here there's a good move, c4. Immediately kind of taking advantage of the queen's positioning. Uh, en passant must be played. If you don't play it, then I just build up and then I push d5. So you can get a very terrible position very quickly. Uh, this is a very venomous system. This is the third wing gambit. And there's a, if I remember correctly, there's a super tricky line in my preparation, uh, in, in the course actually, uh, where after en passant and takes queen a5, there's a move rook b1. I think the move is rook b1. I really think the move is rook b1 just giving up the knight on c3, but I am not 100% sure, but I think it's the move. And there's like one computer line for black where black can be okay, and otherwise it's super scary. So we're gonna hope for that. It, it, it basically has to happen. Um, it basically has to happen. Because there's nothing else besides taking here. If, if you allow my pawns to stand in the center, they will overwhelm you. That is the whole point of the gambit. Give up a pawn. In this case, the really nice thing about this gambit is you give a pawn up off-center. There's many gambits you give pawns up in the center. Giving a pawn up off-center, the presence of the pawn is not felt, right? And so if you don't take me, what are these pawns even doing? Like, what, they're not participating in the game at all, right? So the board opens up 
for the person gambiting. Um, I just hope my opponent isn't digging through an openings database. I'm not saying that's what they're doing. I'm just saying that uh, that is one thing people do that they don't realize is cheating. And if you do, do that, if you're watching this and you do that, stop. Like you have the course on this monitor and you're playing chess and you're like, oh, I forgot the move. Let me check the course. Interesting. It's actually, he, he doesn't take. Uh, don't do that. Again, I'm not saying my opponent is. I'm just saying you shouldn't do that. So I want to go d5, but I also want to go um, bishop e2 right away. If I play bishop e2 right away, is there anything wrong with that? I've, I've like almost never seen this move, actually. So now we have to... We have to play our gambit for advantage. I think I'm going to go here, here in castle. And, and wait a little bit. Wait a little bit. Because the truth is, if you prevent me from playing d5, you're not preventing anything. <laughs> I'm still going to go d5. Uh, so. And then I will put this bishop on b2, and it will be an absolute monster. I mean, it's going to see the entire board. Again, the drawback of... I would evaluate this position, despite white being down a pawn at about 0 0.7, 0 0.8, probably. Unless this is some sort of, you know, and then, oh, Long Castle is an interesting move. Long Castle. Interesting. Okay. So I guess the idea is to play Queen E5 and, like, win my Rook. But what about Bishop E3? Queen A1, DC6? What is going on over there? Oh my god. I mean, I think I should just castle. I mean, honest, just get my king out of the center of the board, set up d5. Long castle here would be the bravest move I've ever seen, because that's... I mean, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know to such an extent it turned me British. Although, I gotta tell you, if I play d5 and then, I mean, long castle d5, e6 is coming. Wow. e6, and then I can't take the knight because I lose my queen. Very imbalanced position. Thinking maybe just bishop e3 then. Seems pretty reasonable. But not an easy position. I like... I went from completely not believing in the move Long Castle to completely believing in the move Long Castle. I'm like starting to actually think, okay, yeah, knight f6 I don't think is good because I can just go d5 and... I think now we are posing some problems to my opponent. Uh, but what do I know about chess? I only pretend. There's all sorts of crazy lines where at the end of like a massive exchange I can go like queen a4. I gotta tell you, knight e5 is also, man, no, no easy, nothing easy has come in this game, huh? Not, nothing easy. If I take, there's bishop e2 with a fork. But then I have queen a4 check? Yeah. So knight e5, knight e5, bishop e2, I jump out this way and that's completely winning for me. Must be. Must be with some, no, nah, but... There's no mate. This is not a checkmate because knight to oh. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. Okay. Ugh. And if queen takes knight, this is trapped, but I take the bishop. Wow, I have no idea what's going on. Maybe knight e5, I'll just develop my second knight. And just reinforce on f3. And threaten all that good stuff. Of course, long castle here is a thing, yeah? Oh, okay, so I, I'm, I, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking it must be this. Th this, must be, this must be the way to go. I'm also a little bit not calculating everything that well. Um, a little bit tired at the end of all this. Um, if knight takes, knight takes. At some point, I'm also, I'm sure some of you watching at this point in the video, by the way, if you've made it 70 minutes in, you are the best. 
shout out to the ad revenue. This is always a question because they can sacrifice, but I, I don't believe that they have enough firepower to, to beat me here. So definitely H3 is also on the cards. Oh, wow. That, uh, I think my opponent left their king in the center and moved too long. But queen e5 still attacks my rook. It's like, it's not clean. I really also want to play this move. But bishop b2 is also a thing, pressuring the knight. Hmm. How do I do this in a, in a coordinated way? So, bishop b2, knight f3, knight f3, bishop g7, h3. If bishop h3, g h3, queen h3, what is the threat? There's a check threat, but I can play queen a4 check myself, and I also have knight back to h2, which covers a lot of the good stuff. If I play h3 now, then after... Well, h3 now just looks very smart, because h3 now, here, here, queen h3, I mean, I take a full knight, and there's no attack. And if h3 take, take knight f3, I mean, I'm safe. I must play this move. It must be the best move. Although, although, and I did again something a little bit stupid, I only calculated bishop takes h3. Yeah, you just get a little bit... You just get a little lazy when you play for a while. Get a little lazy. Like... I only calculated this, but my opponent doesn't have to take. My opponent could just let me take, like just play bishop g7 or something. And then, yes, I get a bishop, but it's pretty, pretty scary. Bishop h6. That is either the smartest or the dumbest move of all time. I have no idea. Uh, wow. Wow. Can I go here? Is bishop takes d2 gonna happen? Bishop e5? My head hurts. I think I'm... I think I'm just gonna go here. I... I <laughs> my, my head hurts. I don't know. Knight f3, knight f3. What a fascinating game. I've definitely screwed this up. Let's put it this way. I, I, I definitely had something uh, more uh, relaxed than this. Um, but, uh, I decided to, to, to do this in the most exotic way. Right, I calculated this, and here I was going to go bishop takes e5, right? Can I also throw an hg4, or is that completely idiotic? If I take, take, and take on e5? Take, take, take e5, knight e5, queen d2, I'm up a piece. If hg4, knight f3, bishop f3... I'm going to probably be up a piece there, too. Guys, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> um, I can't go here because this. There's so many pieces attacking so many things. This is bad because knight takes f3. That was my opponent's entire point. But I want to go bishop takes e5. If bishop takes f3, uh, bishop takes f6, by the way. Um, but no, that, that's, that doesn't work. Bishop f3, queen e5, queen d2. We might get that position, and uh, we also might get this position after I play h takes g4. Uh, and so here I calculated this knight taking on g4 because the threat would be knight takes f3, bishop f3, queen h2, mate. This is very common. The knight and the queen go for h2, and one knight deflects the other knight away. But if this knight takes, then I have this bishop takes this knight. So it's a firefight, but I will be winning this firefight. Um, and uh, yeah, otherwise we're just chilling. Knight takes f3 check first, bishop takes f3, queen g5, defending this bishop on d2 is another option for my opponent. And frankly, probably the only move Probably the only move. I do not see anything else. And it looks like it is transpiring. Queen H... Oh, okay, that's all... Yeah, that also makes sense. Um, I was thinking to take... To open up the king. Queen E2 is not the world's dumbest idea. 
There's also a check I can give. There's also d6. d6 tries to undermine the defense. And if d6, bishop f4, threatening mate, I go g3, bishop takes, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes. That might be it. This could be it right here. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Oh my god, is there still Long Castle? No, no, no. Th there isn't because I can take and take the rook. <laughs> oh my gosh, but there's like o o o here, bishop f4, take. Oh wow, bishop c3. I didn't even consider this move. I don't think it's, I don't think it's great. I just I completely didn't even think that this move was possible. Uh... Okay, I'll take. Now I, now I can never get mated. We can celebrate. I can also take here. I can also take here. BT dubs. I can't believe I just said that out loud. Uh, check this out. It's also rookie one. I mean, I, I'm spoiled for choice here. It, it almost seems like. Uh, wow. So many options. What is the most clinical finish to this game that we can find? It's like everything looks good. Finally, finally things are, are starting to look good. I'm going to take on b7. Of course, there is no knight takes g4. Um, the threat of picking up material is pretty good. So I was thinking to take because of this I have checkmate, which is nice. I also have bishop c6, king f8, and then this, which I think is also nice. Luring the king out into the open can't be... Oh! Oh, you don't even want to take. But what if I pin you and threaten to promote to a horsey where I would attack both of your pieces? That would be very rude. In fact, I can just do that right now. Uh, but if I promote to a knight... We sacrifice something, it's maybe bishop d7 first. This seems smarter because this still can't move and I'm threatening to win the rook. So yeah, I mean, there's no point just giving up a bishop for free. I mean, at least go and promote and take something, right? So the good, really good thing for me is we saw this uh, two games ago. Or last game, two games ago against Foxy. This knight that gets pinned to the king. It's really brutal to defend it. And black is like just a move behind. Like black just wants some counterplay, but just is not going to be able to... <laughs> that is a really good move. Wow. I didn't even see that. Okay, I can try to hang on to the pin, but then this. All right, I probably have to do this. Let's go here. Let's take the rook. And let's just pick the pawn up. All right, we're going to be up a rook for a knight. We're going to be up an exchange. Uh, but um, could have been better. Could have been better. Okay, we guard everything. Here, here, rook d8 ends the game in style. So if take, we have this move. And we use our advanced pawn to disconnect the rook from the protection of the back rank. e8 is a queen guaranteed, or e takes rook, and they resign. Wow, what a game. Uh, I gotta, I gotta honestly review this line. Um, yeah, Queen H5, uh, Bishop E2 was good, Castles was good, and D5 was good. So everything was good. And here, what did I miss? No, I played Knight D2, which was good. Wait, I played, I played all good moves. Did you hear how much doubt was in my voice? Why didn't I take? What was I afraid of? Ah, computer basically thinks that there's no threat. This looks scary though. I played this. And um, still won. Was d6 the best move? Yes, d6 was the best move. I'm, I'm proud. I've actually played quite well. Interesting. But you heard how much doubt was in my voice. I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. Turns out that we played with, with a very cerebral, you know, calculating this, you know, this idea where you would be winning the night here. So I'm happy with this. And uh, reminder that all, everything that I played in this video, uh, courses are in the link in the description. All these openings and all these different ideas are straight up all courses. And folks, I hope you enjoyed. And if you made it 78 minutes through this whole thing, I appreciate you very much. Keep being amazing. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Take care.